Here we go, America. So the Supreme Court just announced it has set April arguments over whether President Trump has immunity for official acts after he left office. Of course, the media, with their propaganda, set it up differently. Now, I've been the one voice, I think, who has said that his argument is both rational and necessary. And if I'm wrong and he's wrong, that means that Joe Biden can and should be prosecuted for his violations of the Espionage Act when he was senator, vice president, and in the private sector, depending on the statute of limitations. Because a Republican administration, should President Trump win, would have the power then to say, uh, we appreciate your report, special counsel her, but we don't agree. And since we have a slam duck case on scores of felonies committed by Joe Biden when he was not president of the United States, so there are no declassification issues of any kind, we will now indict you. Now, of course, the same can be on the civil side, but the court wanted to take up the issue of the criminal side. And on the civil side, the same circuit has ruled that, yes, police officers can sue Donald Trump, claiming that he somehow is the basis for any injuries they reserved, even though he's not been charged with any violence, insurrection, or sedition. The court didn't care. So what does that mean? That means that the families of people who've been murdered, as in Georgia and elsewhere, raped, lost their property or otherwise, personal or physical beings have been affected, will be free to sue Joe Biden personally. Personally. Here's how the Associated Press wrote it. Supreme Court sets April arguments over whether Trump could be prosecuted for election interference. See that phrase? Election interference. Election interference. They've already decided he's guilty of election interference. Not challenging an election. Not fighting an election. Election interference. So in their headline, they've already convicted him of a felony. But that's the Associated Press that accompanied Hamas in the slaughter of October 7th. The justice's order maintains a hold on preparations for a trial focused on Trump's effort to overturn his election loss. There they go again. The court will hold arguments in late April with a decision likely no later than the end of June. All this propaganda by the press by the phony former federal prosecutors, by the phony law professors and all the rest, are intended to put enormous pressure on Supreme Court justices. That's the goal now. But even with a timetable that is much faster than usual, the court action calls into question whether a trial for Trump, assuming the justice denies immunity, it could be scheduled and concluded prior to the November election. See, this isn't about justice. It's never been about justice. Even the way the media write about it. It's, come on, can we get this done before the election? For God's sakes, stop with the Constitution. Stop with due process. We've already decided he's guilty. We'll go through the motions, but let's get, let's get this phony, fake, fraudulent process underway. Trump's lawyers have sought to put off a trial until after the voting. Well, of course they have. By taking up the legally untested question now, and the only reason that it is a legally untested question It's because Jack Smith and the Department of Justice at the direction of Joe Biden are taking legally preposterous positions, pushing us into these constitutional areas where we've never been before. Let's see. The court said in an unsigned statement, and we'll consider, quote, here's the issue. Whether and if so, to what extent does a former president enjoy presidential immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office? I would urge the Supreme Court justices to look at the charges against this president 
related to January 6th. Look at the charges. Look at the stretch. The Klan Act. The Enron Act, which now the court has also taken up to look at. And a Federal Contractor Act, essentially. Those are the three laws. And so we should now turn the Constitution inside out to allow the Biden regime and a rogue prosecutor who former Attorney General Mises said has been appointed in violation of the Appointments Clause of the Constitution so they can succeed at what they're doing. This would open a door to future prosecutions one can only imagine. Oh, I'll get to Mitch McConnell. Don't worry. Supreme Court has previously held that presidents are immune from civil liability for official acts. And Trump's lawyers have for months argued that protection should be extended to criminal prosecution as well. Okay, first of all, for over half a century, it's been the position of the Department of Justice under both parties, all attorneys general, all of them, that you cannot prosecute a sitting president. But after he's president, can you prosecute him for the official acts he's taken if there's an allegation made against him of criminality? That's the issue. And what will that do to an immunity when a president is president? Of course, it'll undercut it horrendously. And it will affect the way that a president operates. And for some judge or justice to say, well, then follow the law, follow the rule, that's not the issue. The issue is retribution. The issue is what's happening today. The effort to take Donald Trump off the campaign trail, to interfere with the election, to interfere with the Republican primary selection process, to interfere with the general election at the behest of the party opposite and the candidate he's running against. We don't need, you know, hypotheticals. We've got reality. It's right in front of us. Lower courts have so far rejected Trump's novel claim. It's a novel claim. It's a novel prosecution. And the lower courts are all filled with Democrats. This is the Associated Depress, the Hamas-supporting participants in October 7, Associated Depressed. A panel of appellate judges in Washington ruled earlier February that U.S. District Court Tanya Chunkin, she's appointed by Obama. Two out of the three judges on the panel were appointed by Biden who had presided over the election interference trial, was right to say that the case could proceed and that Trump can be prosecuted for actions undertaken while in the White House. The issue reached the high court because the appeals court refused to grant the delay that Trump has sought. The issue reached the high court because the panel refused to allow typical due processes to proceed where a claimant can appeal and seek the full court, not just three judges on a panel of the court, to hear the case. He was denied that. The case is separate from the high court's consideration of Trump's appeal to remain on the presidential ballot. Just look at what's going on. The effort to take him off the ballot. Now the court heard that. The effort to prosecute him for acts, not sedition, not insurrection, not violence, But the Klan Act, among others, the Enron Act, which has no place in this whatsoever, and a Federal Contractor Act. Basically, that's why that law was passed. He's not even charged, I would argue, with serious, substantive, related criminal offenses. They keep talking here about it's interference with the election, interference and insurrection, sedition. He's not charged with insurrection and sedition. The High Court will also hear an appeal in April from one of the more than 1,200 people charged in the Capitol riot. The case could upend a charge prosecutors have brought against more than 300 people, including Trump. Now, what's that? What's that? It's the same district, D.C. court with one of the same judges appointed by Biden. 
who took the Enron Act aimed at corporate destruction of documents, corporate, applied it to January 6th as the only handle they could, they can concoct to charge these people with obstruction. So again, rewriting the Enron Act. And that is one of the two charges, excuse me, two of the four charges against Donald Trump on January 6th. The Klan Act, this so-called obstruction issue, and other. So we should turn the Constitution inside out to accommodate a rogue prosecutor and all these Obama-Biden judges. Of course... The Associated Press would never print it the way I explain it, but the way I explain it is accurate. We've got a lot to cover this evening in a a way that only I can cover it. I want to talk to you in a moment about this idea of the so-called uncommitted Democrat vote and how the media are literally covering up the Islamist influence in Arab and Muslim communities across this country, especially in Michigan, by talking passively about what's taking place. The uncommitted vote was led by Rashida Talib. I posted on this this morning. Rashida Talib is a Jew-hating, terrorist-supporting, member of Congress, with Palestinian heritage. Her parents came here from the Palestinian territory. She has voted against condemning Hamas. She has voted present when it came to the rape and the brutality and the sadistic conduct of the terrorists. She voted present. She's leading this effort. When you listen to what imams are saying in Dearborn, Michigan, and other parts of our country, all throughout California, and you have to actually go to places like memory.org and others to get the information, you will not find it on CNN. You will not find it on MSNBC. In fact, you won't find it anywhere but here. If I raise it. This uncommitted, they keep saying, wow, that's a lot of uncommitted. Why are there a lot of uncommitted votes? Well, obviously, it's not all Islamists. It's also some people that go to young people in colleges and universities. But this is the drive. The Rashida Tlaib Hamas wing of the Democrat Party. They're not demanding a ceasefire for a ceasefire. They are demanding the complete abandonment of the state of Israel. They are demanding the obliteration of the state of Israel. That is what they are demanding. And they are now here in force, in large numbers, in different states, with enormous amount of backing from countries like Qatar, from organizations like Hamas. They're here, they're in our face, they're influencing our elections, and right now, they are blackmailing the Democrats and Biden. You either support our position, our anti-Semitic, radical Jew-hating, Israel-hating position, or we are going to defeat you, because now we are in the base of the Democrat Party. That's the truth. Those are the facts. 